On this channel, we do our best to keep you informed about the ever-changing world of zero emission vehicles. Whether it's a classic car conversion or a new startup spreading its wings, we try to cover it. That is as long as we have access to more than a badly written press release and some camera phone images, which are unfortunately pretty common. Unfortunately, there is though one automotive market that does tend to fall through the cracks, and that is the largest automotive market in the world, the Chinese automotive market. Of course, there are several reasons why this tends to be the case. At the top of the list is the fact that I don't speak any Chinese, and while our writer Morgan studied Chinese at school, there's a big old difference between being able to buy things and ask someone how they are versus having an in-depth technical discussion about charge curves, microchips, and autonomous driving systems. Second, YouTube is not technically available in China for reasons that most of you are well and truly aware of. For this reason, there's only a small portion of our audience who would speak English who would be able to watch our content anyway. Lastly, in the past, China has not exported many vehicles abroad to countries where our viewers reside. This is either because those companies have tended to focus on domestic sales or because, historically at least, Chinese vehicles haven't always met the crash test standards that were acquired elsewhere in the world. All of this together has made it kind of difficult for us to bother covering with the Chinese market. However, this is changing. In recent years, China has begun to export more cars abroad, and its EV offerings have improved to be essentially in parity with those found in the US and Europe. So today, we're going to start by delving into that market and focusing on some Chinese car companies that you might want to pay attention to in the EV segment. First though, let's deal with the elephant in the room. The People's Republic of China is a nation whose government does not have the best reputation when it comes to its position on the global stage. From its trade practices to its very different approach to intellectual property and human rights violations, we feel it's important to note that while we are covering the Chinese auto industry in this video, we are most definitely not condoning or supporting the policies or actions of the Chinese government. Any list of Chinese EV manufacturers would be incomplete without BYD. BYD Auto, also known by its Chinese name, BYD Chete, was founded in Shenzhen in China back in 2003 by its parent company, Build Your Dreams Co. Limited. BYD was not built from the ground up to be an EV company, and for many years it wasn't, but over time it has added electric vehicles to its lineup. BYD began producing a plug-in hybrid variant of its F3 sedan, the F3 DM, all the way back in 2008, and since then it's continued to grow its plug-in portfolio. In 2020, according to data from Chinese news outlet Gasku, almost one half of BYD's total sales were new energy vehicles. 179,000 of those were consumer plug-ins. In just the last year, BYD has launched several new models, including the high-end luxury Han EV, and it hopes to sell that in many markets around the world, including Europe, Australia, and other countries. Additionally, in 2020, it also launched its D1 ride-hailing vehicle. It was 2019 when it added a new range of affordable EVs to its lineup, including the S2 subcompact crossover. In the same year, it also launched the E3, and the E2, the first being a compact sedan, and the second, a compact crossover. I'm not going to delve into the specs of each here, but I do want to talk about just how affordable affordable was. At its launch, the S2 started from 89,800 Chinese yuan after government subsidies, which is about one half of the cost of the cheapest electric car that you could buy in the United States at that time. I also feel at this point, especially for those who've watched the channel for more than a decade, that BYD's build quality and reputation have really come on in leaps and bounds. Back seven years ago, when Mark Chatterley and I drove a BYD E6, I remember being unimpressed by the vehicle. In fact, I remember getting very angry about how poorly and dangerously the car handled a test track hill. But those who've driven BYDs in more recent years say that it's the difference between night and day. BYD and China's auto industry as a whole has really upped its game. BYD has expanded its offerings into the commercial vehicle world. Its electric buses and trucks are now common sites around the world, and that makes BYD a far more viable competitor than it was, say, just a decade ago. Finally, at least in reference to BYD, I should note that it's not a startup. It's been successfully producing 
all kinds of vehicles for many years. And this does give it a great leg up on many other companies. Companies that are still startups and dealing with all the challenges of learning to build vehicles for the very first time. This could put it in good stead for the future and maybe, just maybe, allow it to seriously compete against more established brands outside of the Chinese market. The next automaker to keep your eyes on is NIO. NIO, or Weilai as it's known, was founded in 2014, but it's done a lot in the seven years since it was established. It already has multiple cars on the market and has achieved higher than a 100% growth weight year on year since production began. According to carsalesbase.com, NIO sold almost 44,000 vehicles in 2020. Frankly, that is a lot more electric vehicles than many legacy automakers are selling elsewhere in the world. Like many startups, NIO is working to reach long-term financial stability, but it seems to be following a roadmap to profitability that includes expanding its lineup as quickly as it possibly can. So far, we've got the NIO ES6, EC6, and ES8. And I know those names aren't very inspiring, but then NIO shines in other ways, namely its commercialization of battery swap technology. Battery swapping has long been offered as one way to get around range anxiety and offer short refueling stops, but I'd argue that NIO seems to be the first automaker to actually successfully bring battery swapping to a large customer base. Just like the Better Place battery swap stations I experienced almost a decade ago in Israel, everything is automated. But unlike Better Place, where its battery swapping system was essentially key to the company's success, NEO's battery swap functionality is an added bonus on top of its existing business models. This year, NEO unveiled its new luxury sedan in the form of the ET7. It hopes the ET7 will be a Tesla Model S rival and has stated that deliveries will start next year. It claims a range of 620 miles, which is just shy of a thousand kilometers, from its largest capacity 150 kilowatt hour battery pack, a battery pack that actually makes use of solid state battery tech. NEO's goals are certainly lofty, and we learned a long time ago to never say never, but if it can achieve its goals and its claims are true about those solid state battery packs, then this could be a turning point for both the company and the wider EV industry. In the United States, we have the Detroit Big Three, Ford, General Motors, and Chrysler. And in China, there are the Big Four, Dongfeng, Chang'an, FAW, and SAIC. That last one is the one we're going to talk about next. SAIC stands for Shanghai Automotive Industry Corporation, and like other Chinese companies, is partly owned by the Chinese government. But it's also one of the more popular partners for Western automakers entering China and looking to make cars there. I'm not going to go into the politics of this in depth, but the 50,000 foot view is that in order to build cars in China, non-Chinese companies have to partner up with a local brand to establish a subsidiary that then builds vehicles under license. As far as I'm aware, Tesla was the first car company that didn't have to meet this requirement. But if I am wrong about that, please let me know below. SAIC works directly with General Motors on partnerships in China, and it sometimes works with multiple other companies too. Partnerships between automakers and products aren't unusual in the West. It happens all the time. The auto industry is pretty incestuous that way. But the requirements of Chinese business ownership takes this to a whole new level. And this is how we end up with Wuling Motors, a company that's jointly operated by SAIC and General Motors. And as I'm sure you, most of you know by now, the diminutive budget-priced Wulong Hongguan Mini EV proved to be one of the most popular EVs of 2020, even though it's only on sale in China. SAIC also owes Ro and Nanjing brands, among others, as well as the reborn British brand MG. If you're in Europe, you'll know how much of an impact MG's affordable, well-built electric vehicles are having on the EV market. Sadly, because of COVID-19 and because I'm based in Portland, Oregon, I've not had a chance to drive any of these new MG EVs yet, but I hope to the next time I'm back in the UK. Simply put, SAIC might not be that well known, but the companies it owns and the partnerships it holds makes it one of the largest manufacturers of EVs in the world. The last Chinese company to focus on today is Xpeng, or Chaopeng, in China. It's been called the next Tesla by some outlets, or even the Tesla clone. And to be fair, there are just a few reasons why this is. 
Like Tesla, XPeng only offers electric vehicles. Like Tesla, it's heavily focused on the gadget capabilities of its fleet. And it has its own semi-autonomous driver assistance features, with a goal of becoming semi and fully autonomous in the near future. But this is a similarity that's also attracted some court cases. Tesla and XPeng are currently involved in ongoing litigation, where Tesla has accused XPeng of stealing both its intellectual property and some of its staff. The majority of claims against XPeng focus on its autonomous vehicle capabilities, but I feel it's important to note that XPeng doesn't have exactly the same system today as Tesla. It uses LiDAR, which is something that Tesla most famously does not. XPeng currently sells two models in China. There's the aforementioned G3 crossover, and then there's the P7 sedan. Post subsidies in China, the G3 starts at 146,800 yuan, which is equivalent in today's exchanges to about 23,000 US dollars. The G3 can be optioned up to 520 kilometers of driving range, which is about 323 miles. It has five seats and 380 liters of boot space before you fold the rear seats down. Unlike a Model Y, the G3 is much less sporty and sprint times are, well, they're not very impressive. 8.6 seconds in the quickest version. But all in all, the G3 is still pretty interesting as a vehicle to buy. The second vehicle to talk about is the P7. It starts well above the price of the G3. The standard rear wheel drive model starts at 229,900 yuan after government subsidies, which is about $36,000 equivalent at current exchange rates. The P7 is a little bit sportier. According to businesswire.com, it will do zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 4.3 seconds. As of now, the P7 is unavailable in Europe, but the Top Gear magazine reported that their vice chairman, Brian Gu, expressed his wishes for the P7 to come to Europe in the future. So there you have it, a brief dive into the Chinese auto market. I could literally produce an entire series on these car companies, although honestly, finding B-roll assets always makes these kind of videos a little hard to produce. That said, let me know if you'd like to see more of these in the future. That's it for today. As always, thanks to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons. That's John Lyons, Raging Fellows, Anonymous Freak, Paul Conway, Laura Sanborn, Anthony Coates, Sean Ueda, and Tesla in the Gong. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters. Marcel Ward, Jeffrey Songster, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerak, Will Graylin, and Ian. You can join all of these amazing Patreon supporters by following the links below. You'll also find a link to send us a tip through Ko-fi or Bitcoin if you'd prefer to support us that way, and you can. There's also a link to our Discord chat server, which is completely free to join and has been getting a lot of cool conversations. So give that a go if you're feeling chatty. And as usual, you'll find everything from t-shirts to face masks and water bottles over at our Red Bubble store. Thanks for joining me. And as always, keep evolving. <laughs> <laughs>